welcome everyone. Um, I want to say hello to you and welcome to becoming a new member of the Gator Nation. If this is your first time joining us as a graduate student at UF, you might, some people have come through as undergrads, so this might not be your first Gator experience, but we're really happy that you've joined us. And we wanna spend a few minutes this morning or this afternoon, depending on where on the planet you are, that we would like to introduce you to some of the tips that'll help you get around with becoming a new student um, online with us. But I will warn you that it's more to learning um, how to be an online graduate student than we can prepare you for in this hour. This is gonna give you a flavor of it, but you will also receive a copy of these slides by email after the session so that any links, you don't have to worry about writing them down that you'll be able to find those links, okay? Um, so our purpose today is really just to introduce you to some of the people that you'll be working in the administration of this program and also to like just get you briefly oriented. Um, so with that, I'm going to tell you who I am. I'm Dr. Terry Spencer, and I'm the program director for the online graduate program in shelter medicine. And join with us on this presentation today are several other administrators that you need to know. So first, I'm going to introduce you to our team that's from DESC, or the Distance Education Support Center. Um, they are who helped you get um, entered into the program. It's their website where you went to submit your applications and you will, you got a bunch of emails from them as you were notified about this session. So you will also receive an email from them once a semester with your unique link to register. So would Xavier and Bernard please introduce yourselves? Hi there, I'm Bernard. Um, I do multimedia. So if you've seen any of our advertising to get to this point, um, it was probably something that I had a hand in. Um, and I'll let Xavier and Anad introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. Happy, happy new starts the new semester. Name's Xavier Bellardi. I am a marketing and communication specialist, and I will be helping out Dr. Spencer with her presentation today. Okay, on it. Uh, hello, I'm Anath Whalen. I'm an admissions officer. I help most of you through the admissions process, but that doesn't mean that uh, you can't contact me anymore. So if you have any issues or problems, feel free to reach out to me and I will get you in touch with people that can actually help you. Thank you. Thank you. These people do a, ma a marvelous job getting you all into the program. So thank you very much for what you do. Um, and next, I'm going to introduce a few other members of our team on the academic side of things. So you are now part of the Maple Center for Forensic Medicine. And in the Maple Center for Forensic Medicine lives several online graduate programs of which we're one. So the shelter medicine is part of it, but another one is forensic medicine and veterinary forensic sciences and also wildlife forensics and conservation. And with us is um, Dr. Lyra Sutton. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Lyra Sutton. I'm the director of the forensic medicine master's degree program within the Maple Center, but I am also the associate director, excuse me, assistant director, co-director, along with Dr. Bird uh, for the Maple Center for Forensic Medicine as a whole. And that is the organization that oversees all of the graduate programs here at, at UF in forensics and shelter med. Thank you, Dr. Sutton. And so it's a little confusing because we're all at UF, but Maple Center is our home. And we um, the programs that are clustered together in Maple Center, including us, are separated from different colleges. So the shelter medicine program is really home base is the College of Vet Med, and, then, and so is the Veterinary Forensic Sciences, and then the Forensic Medicine, its home is the College of Medicine, and then Wildlife is often, I believe, Cal's or College of Art, I don't know where they are. <laughs> so the next person I'm going to introduce is someone who is busy, busy behind the scenes for all of these programs. And whenever you need some sort of support with enrolling in classes or withdrawing from a class or correcting a grade or processing a withdrawal or, or an incomplete, this is the person you need to know. Um, and oh, there's two of them. So with us. So these two people you can access via a link that we'll share later about forensics at ahc.ufl.edu, but these two people are super important. So Narcy and Rachel, would you introduce yourself, please? 
All right, I'll go first. Hi, this is Narasi Ramachandran, and as Dr. Spencer mentioned, I will be pretty much your partner in your academic journey as long as uh, you are continuing your pursuits of academic careers with UF, be it uh, as a graduate certificate student masters or even future uh, as a lifelong learner uh, if you join some of our CE uh, initiatives. And um, welcome to the program and we're excited to have you. And Rachel? Well, I'm Rachel. I'm the other half of the advising team with Narcy. Um, we're at the forensics email. Uh, I was a Maple Center student myself. I graduated last spring and now get to work for the Maple Center full time. Um, but yeah, we're here if you guys need any help. Um, registration, withdrawing from courses, um, figuring out stuff on Canvas. We're more than happy to help. Good. Everybody's here to help and we will do what we can. Um, we all are spread out. We look like we're all in Gainesville. We're not all in Gainesville. It's like just like many of you are not in Gainesville either, but we will get with you as soon as we can to help whenever you have a need. So um, Xavier, can I have the next slide, please? So, okay. So you're in the orientation for the graduate program in shelter medicine. So hopefully you've arrived in the right place. And what we do in shelter medicine is we fill a curriculum gap because this is a relatively new arm of veterinary medicine that didn't exist until about 2014. Um, it became a boarded specialty in veterinary medicine, but before that, vet schools didn't even teach shelter medicine at, to veterinarians as they left the program. And as many of you know from working in the field, not everybody has to be a veterinarian to work in shelters. We have lots of different roles in shelters. There's animal control officers, executive directors, marketing directors, operations directors, kennel assistants, behavior assistants. There's all kinds of roles. So our program sets out to fill that need to train the people who are working in the field, as well as those who want to get more advanced training. Some of our people go on, um, join this program because they're hoping to go to vet school. So they use it sort of as a gap year or so until they can get to vet school. Other people use it to advance in their careers. And there's a lot of veterinarians in the program as well who are sometimes retraining from a different specialty or sometimes just trying to um, gather additional credentials and background. But we're all in this together. And I want you to know that you will be joined by colleagues from around the world. We had an orientation or a meet and greet just recently on Wednesday night, and we had students and faculty with us that were from Australia, they were in Colombia, Puerto Rico, all over the US, Canada, they're everywhere. So it's it sounds like it's huge. It's really a small world, and hopefully you'll get to know one another and all your colleagues in shelter medicine. I do want you to know that our program is not just a master's degree. It also includes two graduate certificates that are each five courses long. We have one graduate certificate that's specifically in shelter medicine, and it has the five core courses that you need to take to earn that certificate, which also form half of the master's degree. The second certificate that's available is a graduate certificate in leadership for animal shelters which is brand new and we're just really launching this semester. And those courses currently can be taken alone as the certificate or also as electives within the master's. And then we have the master's degree, which is a 30 credit program. And at the end of which you have to present a capstone project where you apply your knowledge to something that you're passionate about that you've learned in your course of your training. But we have more. We also have non-degree seeking students who are just dropping in to take a course or test the waters, see if they wanna continue with us. And we have recently launched some continuing education courses as well. We call them sort of mini courses that are available to non-graduate students. You guys can take them as well as a graduate student, but they're intended for anybody. Um, one of the CE courses that we have available is euthanasia by injection so that when anybody at the shelter who needs to become a certified euthanasia technician can go through that program. And we have others about exploring access to care. But with that, I wanna stop for a moment and let you know that we have more CE available through the Maple Center. And so Dr. Sutton, would you just introduce that for us? Absolutely. So thank you, Dr. Spencer. That was a great intro to the concept of CE, continuing education. 
And in general, and we'll touch on this a little bit later on when we give you some, some links and some websites to make sure you bookmark, but you do want to make sure you stay involved with the Maples Center in general, because as Dr. Spencer explained, we run a lot of closely related academic programs, whether that's graduate level academic programs like the one you're in now, or continuing education programs. The important distinction here is continuing education provides CE hours, not academic credit hours. So that's very important for your professional credentials and certification, but it doesn't always count towards your academic career. It's beneficial, but they provide different benefits. So some of the courses that we offer through the Maple Center are very forensic focused and might not necessarily be of primary interest to you in shelter medicine. They might, um, especially those of you who are doing a dual degree, but we offer new courses on a fairly regular basis. A couple times a year, we launch some sort of new continuing education, and all of that is accessible through the Maple Center website. Uh, most of it is online, but some of it is in person. So if you want the opportunity to come to campus and interact hands-on with your colleagues, your professors, your uh, faculty members here at UF, the online continuing education is, is great. It's very convenient. But we do encourage students when they're able to come to campus and do those in-person opportunities as well. Particularly relevant to shelter medicine is our continuing education course on photography. It teaches these amazing techniques for how to capture photography in the most challenging circumstances, which I think anyone who's tried to photograph a hyper, sometimes scared, moving animal can say how beneficial that can be. So that's just one of our many courses. Some are just one day, some are a full week. So we offer a lot of options depending on your level and the area of interest. That about cover it? That covers it. Thank you, Dr. Sutton. All right, sounds good. <laughs> and, and you'll see on our course planner that there are many electives offered in the other tracks that you can include as part of your master's degree if you choose. We have a lot of people that, like we've had some animal control officers study with us. And so for veterinary forensics is very important for their job. And so they take a lot of electives um, outside of shelter medicine, but they're still within the Maple Center. So I'm about to start the rest of the presentation here, but I wanna give you a little hint that now that you are a Gator, I want you to know that there's a web page for almost anything at UF. So you can get really good at finding information if you Google for it, and there will probably be a web page. And if you put UF Maple Center, you'll always find it. Although Rachel put the link, the direct link in there for you. But I'm also gonna give you a hint to know that everything, almost everything gets a gator in the, in the name. So you're going to be introduced to a lot of gator terms today, but there's things like gator mail and gator tron and gator cloud and just get used to it. Everything has a gator. And if you come to campus, there's the gator swamp. There's just all these things. Okay, so next slide, Xavier. So you've already met me. I'm Dr. Spencer. If you want to meet the rest of our faculty, we have um, faculty members from around the world. And you can. there's a picture and a bio for all of them and information on our website that tells you what courses they teach. So we have some boarded specialists, several boarded specialists in, in um, shelter medicine, some in public health. We have um, a variety of really experienced faculty members, some who direct veterinary technology programs, some who are specialists in disaster response. Um, we have communications and marketing specialists who also teach about photography and how to market those pets in the shelters. So there's lots of people on that website. Please get to know them. But I want you to know that we also have ancillary, I would call them value-added opportunities for you as a student with us. And one of those value-added opportunities already started, as I mentioned, on Wednesday. And so you might as well go ahead and mark it on your calendar that every Wednesday night, we have what's called Grand Rounds. And Grand Rounds presentations are offered in Zoom, and there's a link to Grand Rounds there. And there's always a schedule of who's going to be speaking. We usually start about 7.30 p.m. Eastern. 
and we record all the sessions for those people who may be like in the Pacific time zone and they're still working at 730 Eastern. Um, so you can still watch them. But the reason that this is important is we bring in special speakers that are nationally and internationally known every Wednesday night for you. We have people that graduate from us and they continue to return to Grand Rounds because it's such a great opportunity to update your knowledge. Since shelter medicine became a specialty um, a few years back, the research is just burgeoning. And so there's it's very difficult to keep up with how much the field is changing. So Grand Rounds is an opportunity for you to keep up to date. We also tie Grand Rounds to another value added opportunity, which is our online journal club. So every semester I post in a asynchronous dis discussion tool, at least four to six recently published papers for you to review and discuss with your classmates. Um, it's not graded, it's an optional activity, but we do expect all graduate students to learn how to critically read a scientific paper. And we also do expect you to attend Grand Rounds at least once, either live or by recording every semester. So those papers in the Journal Club are also tied to the authors who wrote them. So we have the authors come to Grand Rounds and give presentations. Um, the presentation on Wednesday night was actually by Heather Camissa and she has a paper that's the first paper in the online journal club. So check it out. There's also an easy button in every course. Once you get into e-learning, whatever course you're in in shelter medicine on the left-hand side of the menu, you will see an easy button that can get you to the Grand Rounds master schedule. And it always includes the link to the Zoom room so you'll know where to find it. And it includes the schedule and recordings of any past Grand Rounds that we've ever done. It's also the place every Wednesday um, starting this time, probably start in October, but anybody who's graduating from our program and is required to do a capstone project presents their capstone presentation live in Grand Rounds. And so we really want you to come out and support and learn from your colleagues to see the amazing work that they do with what they've learned in this program. Um, so this semester, our first one is already scheduled. We have 13 or 14 capstone presentations that will be scheduled. Um, the first one's already on the calendar for October 5th, so check it out. Um, so with that, you can ask questions about this later too, if you have any problems. So next slide, please, Xavier. Okay, so accessing your courses. Where is this stuff? The link in the center of that page is probably one you need to bookmark and learn. It's elearning.ufl.edu. Once you log in there, use your Gator, Gator credentials, <laughs> Gator e, um, name, to log into eLearning, and there will be a dashboard that shows you all the courses that you're enrolled in. For, uh, it's also the place where all that's where you take your courses, you can find out what's due each week. Most of our courses have additional chapters or modules for you to go through, and so be sure that you click through all the pages on the modules. Um, and do all the assignments that are given to you in e-learning. There is, all of you who are just starting in shelter medicine, you are all required to take VME 6810 in your first semester. So that should definitely be on your dashboard when you open e-learning. That's called Integrating Veterinary Medicine with Shelter Systems. It's a pretty broad overview of the basic components of sh animal sheltering from physical health, behavioral health, population management, operations, um, high quality, high volume spay neuter, those kinds of things. And it also has a hidden agenda because there is a huge learning curve to getting comfortable becoming an online student. Our courses are not like anything that you might have done online during the pandemic. You're not just going to hear a lecture and take a quiz. Our courses are highly interactive and we expect you to spend you know, quite a bit of time each week working with the courses and chatting with your classmates and doing your assignments. And we also include what are called authentic assignments. So rather than giving you midterms and finals and high value exams, we ask you to do work that you can put to use tomorrow in the animal shelter. 
For instance, if we expect you to know that doing population rounds daily or at least weekly is important and a standard of care, then we're gonna guide you through how to do population rounds and then give you a simulated population round that you have to work with and report back to us on. Um, you might also, if you have to know that standard operating protocols or SOPs are super important for making sure that the shelter is upholding all the standards that we expect and keeping the animals as healthy and safe and their welfare good, then you will write an SOP and you may share them with your classmates and peer review one another's SOPs. So these things are gonna take some time. Um, and so please dig into that work. And this is, course is gonna help you overcome the technology. So the instructors in BME 6810 are there to make sure that you've tried every aspect of Canvas. In your first course, you're gonna do recorded presentations. You're going to participate in discussions. You're gonna do peer reviews. Um, you're going to report on grand rounds. You're gonna review papers in the course reserves. So we're gonna really put you through your paces and know that everybody goes through that technology learning curve. It's scary, you feel inadequate, but Dr. Wright, and Dr. Chan will be there and they are really set out to help you, okay? Next slide, please. The other course that you should see, no matter where you are in the program, um, if you're in shelter medicine, whether it's leadership, shelter medicine itself, you are all going to be added to a course that will always be on your dashboard. It's an ongoing course. It's there every semester, and it's called Online Shelter Medicine Graduate Students. When you click on it, it looks like that homepage, similar to that page that's on the slide. And this is a place where I keep all of the students together so that you're all in one place for me to give you important updates or news. So inside there, you will see regular announcements from me reminding you of grand rounds. Um, I just posted an announcement there in the last hour that we have some interactive things for you to do before our next grand rounds next Wednesday night. Um, so look for that. It links to a three question survey we want you to fill out, but it also gives you job announcements. Um, it gives you reminders when it's time to apply to graduate. Um, it, it gives you news, like we have a brand new um, textbook that was just published this month and we've just got it available in the library. So it, the news is hot off the press in this course, but it also is a place for you to communicate with me as your academic advisor. So there are ungraded assignments in there every semester that you need to pay attention to because it's how I keep touch with you and you keep touch with me. So the first assignment in there is to let me know that you've attended an orientation session. So if you came today, you can go in there and just give me a little note for the first assignment that says I attended the live session, but we also have them recorded for people that want to watch the recordings, you can do it that way. The other assignment is for you to um, review our policies and procedures and the UF Honor Code and to take a quiz over that. It's a mandatory quiz, you have to do it once, okay? You only have to watch the orientation once and you only have to take the Honor Code quiz once, but we want you to do it now. But there will be other assignments in there as well. So when it gets closer to the time for you to submit a capstone proposal, there's information about how to do that. There's buttons that go to each module, and this looks like how your courses will be laid out in any shelter medicine course. There will always be buttons to take you to the modules on the homepage, and everything will look similar for you. We have This is where you will access the online journal club as well if you want to participate in that. Um, as I said, it's optional, but it's really highly valuable for you to learn how to we critically review scientific papers because it will certainly help you as you go through our courses and it will certainly help you with your capstone project as well. So please make sure you're in that course. If you aren't, let Narcy and Rachel know so that they can add you, <laughs> okay? So sometimes we miss people, like they've been busy enrolling over a thousand course enrollments in the last couple of weeks and they might have accidentally missed adding you to this course. Please let us know if you need to be added, okay? And it's where, anyway, I want you to make sure that you're there. So next slide. Okay, so here's where we start getting into lots of links and lots of gators. So first, the, I, I got two critical things to tell you. The first one is because this is a distance learning course, email is super important, right, for use. 
But what's confusing is we have two email systems, right? And so don't get confused. The one that's in e-learning, our e-learning system is called Canvas, and it has a tool called Inbox. When you use the Inbox, you are reaching out to people in specific courses. So you can send me an Inbox message through the ongoing course. You can send your faculty and TA messages through the inbox to whatever course you're enrolled in. So that's a quick way to meet or to um, contact your faculty members. If you need something else, you need to know that you have a different email system at, at UF. It's called Gator Mail. And um, there's a link to it there. And I really, really need you to know about that and to log into it pretty frequently. You, uh, you might be able to connect it to your personal email, but I don't know if UF allows that anymore. But in there, that's where every semester you will get emails from the DESC people that you met early on that will give you a unique link to register for your courses. It's also a place where you will hear, hear from Narcy and Rachel when they're trying to remind you that here's um, it's time to apply to graduate or they need to get a hold of you to audit you didn't, you missed a course or your GPA is dropping or whatever, but important messages from the university are gonna come through your Gator mail. So please know that, okay? They're different and you need to check them both. The next thing you need to know is that as a distance ed student, one of the biggest benefits you have is you have access completely to the huge and important UF library system. Everything in the UF library is available to you. The, we are part of the Health Science Center, so there's a specific Health Science Center library, um, but it's still part of the whole UF library. And anything you need, um, if you need to do a literature review, you need to learn how to use a citation management um, tool, um, you don't know how to use, you know, how to look, do a literature search, this is available to you in the UF library. But the thing that you have to know and tuck this away, it's the, it's, remember Dr. Spencer will be in your head. If you ever go to open a paper or an ebook from the library and it tells you there's a fee, like it may say, you have to purchase this paper for $16. Remember that I told you that's not true. That means that you didn't have your UF VPN open. So a VPN is a virtual private network and there's instructions in that ongoing course about how to download it. There's also instructions in the intro module, of every course about how to get the UF VPN connected if you have problems, who to contact. But that VPN, it will not tell you in the library system that it's not open. The only way it reminds you that it's not open is if you have to pay for something because everything at UF should be free, okay, in that library. It, so if it tells you there's a fee, go back and open your VPN and try it again. All right, so that's super critical. And the VPN is, is really cool too, that you can open that when you are using um, Wi-Fi networks, like maybe you're studying at the local Starbucks and using their Wi-Fi on your laptop, open your VPN so nobody can attack your information. Okay, one other critical piece that's unique to our program is I want to remind everybody that you are expected to build a relationship with a shelter somewhere in your location. Okay, we have defined shelters very broadly. There are municipal shelters that are part of the county or city government. There are nonprofit shelters that may be a humane society or an SPCA. There are hybrid shelters that may be a nonprofit shelter that has a contract for animal control with their local jurisdiction. There are also rescue groups that we include in this umbrella, sanctuaries that we include in this umbrella as well as, um, I forgot what the last one will be. Anyway, all of that, oh, high quality, high volume spay neuter facilities are also what we include in shelters. So you need to have a relationship with those. A lot of people already work for those agencies when they come to us, so it's not a problem. But if you are like a post back student, you're trying to go to vet school, or you're just trying to break into shelter, the sheltering world, you need to develop a relationship. And that's because, as I told you, all of our courses require you to do authentic things that would actually happen in the workplace. And if you can, if you've never seen a shelter or never volunteered with a shelter, or you've never tried to walk an unruly dog at the shelter, you need to go and experience it. 
because this is really important stuff. So everybody should have a relationship with a shelter, okay? And then if you have any other questions, um, always go back to our online shelter medicine website because there's all kinds of information there. Every course we teach, when we teach it, every syllabus is available to you. It tells you what textbooks you're gonna need, anything like that. One other little tip about textbooks is almost everything that you need to read will be available to you in our course reserves within our online courses. There are, however, a few required textbooks that are not available in digital form. And so we do ask you to purchase those. One of those textbooks, I will warn you, is in the VME 6816, the role of the animal shelter in um, protecting community and public health. I just call it public health course for short. But that book is printed by the University um, of Iowa State University. And if you go to purchase that book, it's not available digitally. So if you go to purchase that book and you go to Amazon or you know one of the book websites, it may cost you hundreds of dollars, but inside our syllabus, we give you a link to purchase it for $30 directly from the university. So I know probably any course you've ever taken tells you to read the syllabus, do read the syllabus, okay? Because it can save you a lot of money and a lot of effort. Okay, next slide. All right, tips for learning. Online learning, as we know, I'm sure that everybody's had to do something online, maybe even with their children during the pandemic, but it's important to have a dedicated study place um, that's quiet. We all know that things get in the way, like my own cat walks across my keyboard all the time and the dogs bark or the power goes out or the, as Dr. Sutton says, a lightning struck her router. Like we all know that happens, but have a dedicated study space and a scheduled time to do this work. This is graduate level work. This is not undergraduate work and you are expected to spend at least three hours a week working on every credit you're taking. So if you're taking one course, a three credit course, that's nine hours of work every week for that course. For that reason, we do not recommend that if you are already employed and working full time somewhere that you take more than six hours a semester. Okay, six hours plus work is a lot of work. Okay, um, and that six hours should be considered, I think it's considered full time even for UF and it should qualify you for financial aid if you're in the master's track. Okay. Um, I also recommend that you start out slowly, that you don't try to take two or three courses in the first semester, give yourself a chance to get adjusted to um, online learning first. We do have other tips on our um, website if you wanna look at the UF online resources page. And the last thing is our faculty are also work. Um, not all of us have other jobs. So they are busy working in shelters or teaching or running, um, you know, businesses. And so they know that life has a way of getting in, to, in front of our best laid plans. Reach out to your faculty and to Narcy and Rachel if you're having a problem. Don't wait until something is due and then tell us, oh my gosh, my house was struck in the flood and I don't have any power for a week, or my family came down with COVID. Tell us in advance using the Gator Mail or the inbox. Um, message us because we we can extend deadlines. We can help with um, withdrawals. We can help with all kinds of things. But you have to tell us, and we do understand that people are working. This is a program set up for working professionals, and we know that life gets in the way. We want you to do well, so please let us know when you're having a problem. Okay. Next slide. Okay, as a student, you are officially a grad student. I know it feels different if you're not on campus, but you are part of the Gator Nation. And that means that you get access to almost everything that the on-campus students can have access to. So you can get a Gator One card, which you say, well, why would I want that? I'm not buying food on campus or shopping on campus, but it still has other perks. There are things called Gator perks. If you have a Gator One card, you can prove you're a Gator student and you can maybe get a discount at AT&T or with an enterprise rental car, all kinds of stuff. So get a Gator One card. Um, there's a Gator Cloud. I told you everything has the name of Gator and Gator Cloud gives you free access to a Microsoft, every Microsoft product. You can even download it on up to five computers in your home if you want, or you can use the um, cloud version. 
We have a full G Suite, which is a Google Suite. You have Dropbox. You'll have access to Zoom. You'll have access to all kinds of tools, like you can use um, Qualtrics survey tool. You can use LinkedIn Learning for free. All of those are available to you. If you have technology issues, we have a help desk that's open 24 seven. Um, and there's a link to their website there. You can email them, you can call them. Someone's always available to help, like you get locked out of the course or you're, you forgot to change your password in time or something goes wrong. And if you, it, they even have a TTI line if you have hearing difficulties and they have a way to reach out to you internationally as well, if you have to reach out to them. You also get access because we want you to advance in your careers. You have access to the UF Careers Co Connection Center and you have access to the whole graduate professional development office. So there's links to all of those things. They can help you with resume writing, job searches, all those things. You also have full access from a distance to the student success services. If you are experiencing heavy anxiety or learning disabilities or you can't manage family work-life balance and you need help, the Wellness Center can help you and they will help you from a distance, okay? So those are all the tools that are available to you. And I will um, come back to this in uh, later when we have time for questions, but I think I'm gonna turn it over to Narcy now. I think the next slide goes to Narcy. So thank you, Dr. Spencer, and thank you all for making time to join us this afternoon. I'm going to go through our slides real quick, and uh, all the recordings and these slide decks would be available uh, via multiple channels and also be posted on the online graduate course that we have for you in Canvas. So as many of you would have heard from us, uh, including our uh, admissions team about registration this week until the next week, we have a registration ad drop going on. So if you go through your schedule and you've had a chance to review your syllabi and uh, wish to make any changes, please reach us out at the departmental email. Rachel and I can um, definitely help you with making those schedule changes. Uh, if some of you are in the master's track and seeking the federal financial loan, <clears throat> then make sure that you're at least taking six credits during fall and spring because that is the minimum load that you need to maintain. But uh, if you're not seeking federal financial aid, then you're okay. You can take as many courses or as little as you want, depending on your work life balance. Students uh, often move from one track to the other. Most likely they start out like certificate and then go to the master's degree and so on and so forth. Whenever you are planning to do that, please do reach out to our office and also to our admissions office. They're very resourceful in making sure you fill out the right application and also make sure you submit the right documentation. Once you move from one track to the other, the credits that you may have earned, which is a B or higher in the previous track, like your non-degree or graduate certificate, can be uh, applied to your master's program. And we can only move a maximum of 15 credits, and they all have to have a B or higher grade in it. And it has to also be done within seven years of having completed those course. So there is a time factor involved with it. Uh, I also want to point out to our student disability resources, this is something very useful and um, they do offer consultation. If you have any special learning disabilities that needs to be accommodated, you could reach out to our DSO's office and they will work with you on getting the required letter that you are required to submit to each instructor during the semester at the start of the term so we can make necessary accommodations, be it uh, if you need extra time for quizzes or uh, other uh, recommendation that comes from the Disability Resources Office. Um, as Dr. Spencer mentioned, and the uh, pandemic and its um, new wave of uh, endemic, I would say, uh, that continues, we all have health challenges besides the pandemic and endemic. But when you run into those kind of situations, please feel free to reach out to us and we will be more than happy to guide you in what you need to be doing. We do have clauses for medical withdrawals that has to be strictly adhered to, but that all that is processed by Dean of Students Office and there are strict guidelines and paperwork that is required that need to be submitted on a timely basis. 
There are also um, uh, chances that other things may happen which are non-medical and those would also require formal petitioning that is reviewed by the registrar's office and a committee to approve those. Um, the other important thing to keep in mind is as you get uh, comfortable in the program and are gearing up and completing your courses, you have to stick to at least a 3.0 or higher GPA to graduate. All graduate students are expected to maintain that graduation uh, or GPA requirements, my apologies. And um, if you do not, then uh, you will hear from us and also the financial aid office would kind of reach out to you if you're not meeting the requirements and so on and so forth. Fees and payments. So the one.uf is your student portal. And technically, you could go ahead and set up your payment of tuition and uh, anything else like your polls that you cleared earlier this term to get registered. So please keep an eye out on 1.uf. That is where important information that comes out is stacked for you to review. And also to pay your fees, you can go and do it there. However, please note that we do not charge late fee. And if you have um, a sponsor like your... Um, county or office that is paying your tuition, then we can help you facilitate that with the bursar so they could make those direct payments to the university. So that's pretty much what I have to uh, share from our academic support team. And Rachel and I are here for you if you need anything from us. Rachel, you want to say hi to them and share another word or two of wisdom? Yeah, hey. sorry, I won't let me unmute myself, but I think you covered everything. Um, we're both successful at the forensic email. Um, Drop ad ends on Tuesday, like Narcy said. If you go on when you ask and you see that there's any issues with your schedule or the bursar, reach out to us and let us know so we can help you with that before the end of drop ad. Um, but anything else, just let us know. We're here to help you and happy to do it. The one thing I will emphasize is that the One UF site actually looks like when you go there that that's where you can add courses. Do not do that. <laughs> if you need to add a course, let Narcy and Rachel know. And, um, and remember that we are departmentally controlling our enrollments. So you get a unique registration link every semester in your email from DESC office. Um, we actually had a student this semester who accidentally enrolled himself through 1.uf and got into a course that none of us could see that was for on-campus students. So please remember, don't do that. You, It will get confusing, I know, but we will tell you over and over, okay? Okay, next slide, Xavier. I think that's you, Narcy. Uh, my, my apologies. I just want to add one more quick emphasis about what Dr. Spencer mentioned about signing up for other classes, because that could also impact your tuition, because students who are in our shelter medicine program have a flat tuition rate. But if you take on other courses, then you may be charged out of state tuition and other kinds of things, and it messes up your uh, financial aid or um, whatever you plan for financially for your tuition. Do you want to talk about the graduate student handbook? Sorry. Um, so um, I thought you were going to talk about it. That's why. But uh, the student uh, uh, graduate handbook is your, what I would call as a reference manual. And I would definitely recommend, we're going to post a link to this in the online uh, shelter medicine uh, ongoing site as well. But please read this and um, familiarize yourself. The one thing that I would definitely emphasize here is the um, University of Policy, uh, Florida policies for, of course, um, what we call um, grades, how you would, um, um, what do you call, transition from one program to the other, the deadlines for application that would be posted, and also you get those communications. And as Dr. Spencer mentioned, please keep an eye on your UFL mail, which is the mail.ufl.edu for those communications. And last, not but the least, is the uh, honor code. Um, we are all working professionals, and we want to make sure that you succeed in your programs and we are here for you. But UF has got very strict honor code that you will have to abide by, including your academic honesty code that is also a part of it. 
then you will see some of those documentations and um, statements in your syllabi and all your courses. And we'll put this uh, link to the your handbook, uh, graduate students handbook in your online course. Dr. Sutton, do you wanna give your favorite quote about the UF Honor Code? I absolutely do. I've been <laughs> teaching here at UF. I started teaching undergrad uh, first, and then I moved into graduate education. And the thing that was very staggering to me between the undergraduate handbook and the graduate handbook was a quote that I like to share every semester, which states that rules are not waived for ignorance. And that's very important. I find myself at least once a semester sharing that quote with my students to let them know that your lack of awareness of a policy or a rule doesn't mean it doesn't apply to you. So make sure you are familiar with the policies and procedures because you will be held to them whether you've read them or not. So do yourself a favor, read them, make sure you understand them. And if you have any questions about what any of the policies mean, you can reach out to Dr. Spencer. She's familiar with the graduate handbook. You can reach out to Narcy or Rachel. Or if you have any general Maple Center academic questions in general, you're welcome to reach out to me as well. I'll share my email in the chat. UF is a very big place and it's one of the biggest um, research institutions in the US. And so they are very strict about rules and we really want you to follow and abide by those. And that's the reason that one of your first assignments in the ongoing course is to review the honor code and policies and to take a little quiz over them. So please know that. Um, so thank you for that. Next slide. Okay, so this will be in your, um, what you receive after this presentation as well, but those are, very important emails and websites for you to know. Our online sheltermedicine.vetmed.ufl.edu website where you went to apply to enter this program has everything you need to know. They even have a chat bot. So if you need to talk to somebody, it's probably Annette behind the scenes doing the chat bot, but somebody will help you, okay? There's a phone number that goes, I think that goes to Narcy and Rachel if you need it. They may not answer the phone, but you can leave a message, okay? And they will call you back when they can. Um, and they're in Eastern time zone, so I don't know where you'll be, so it could be a time zone difference. If you have programmatic questions, you need help with withdrawal, you need help with your grades, you need help with, um, you know, you didn't get enrolled in the right class or the right credits, or you need an audit of your transcript, it goes to Rachel and Narcy at forensics at ahc.ufl.edu. If you need help with um, what you're doing in the courses, you can reach out to me or to your faculty members. I can help you approve your capstone projects. I can brainstorm with them for you. You can reach me through tspencer at ufl.edu. Also on the homepage of the ongoing course, there is actually a little link to my calendar that you can book an 30 minute academic advising appointment with me directly. You don't even have to email me, just do it. And you'll show up on my calendar and I'll be there via Zoom at that time to speak with you and answer questions. But if you have questions of our need to change programs, like from one certificate to another, or from one track to another, or anything like that, or you need you couldn't find your registration link for the semester, go to masters at dce.ufl.edu. Okay. And oh, there's a thing in the chat that Rachel says her number is 352-265-9940 is her work phone and she's available to talk to me anytime between eight to five Eastern time. We probably should get that added to this slide um, before we send this out. So we'll get Rachel's because I'm not sure the chat goes with the recording, okay? With that, I think that's the last slide, right? Xavier, could you check for me? Okay, so with that, we're going to do something. You can turn off the slide if you want, Xavier. We're gonna teach you something right now. I'm going to teach you something as a Gator, okay? Um, if you were in UF on campus, you would see this at every home game or any assembly of any sort, but we are Gators. And so you need to celebrate being a Gator by doing the Gator Chomp. It's gonna be hard to see me. There, you can see better with Lara. So I want everybody to do the Gator Chomp. Congratulations on becoming a Gator. And we're looking, thank you, Dr. Mendez. We're looking forward to working with you online, okay? All right, that's all I got. All right, thank you all for attending. We um, will see you 
maybe in right away online. Yes.